This is the humerus of the ox. So as we know the humerus it is a long bone and it is anatomical position it is it is obliquely downwards and backwards. So while as the scapula that is obliquely downwards and forwards. This humerus it articulates here above with the scapula. So the scapula it is here. So above the humerus it articulates with the scapula and form shoulder joint while as below it articulates with radius and ulna and forum the elbow joint so for the description as we know the long bone it has a shaft and it has two extremities this is the shaft and this is the proximal extremity and this is the distal extremity now so first coming to this shaft the shaft it is twisted so you can see the shaft it is twisted it presents four surfaces one it is the lateral surface it has a medial surface this is the medial surface it has an anterior surface this is the anterior surface and this is the posterior surface this one is the posterior surface now coming first to this lateral surface the lateral surface it is this is the lateral surface it is spirally curved you can see this is the lateral surface which is spirally curved and it forms a groove that is known as musculospiral groove this is the groove this is known as musculospiral groove so this musculospiral groove it is occupied by a muscle that is known as brachialis and radial nerve so this is the musculospiral groove and this musculospiral groove it is continuous with the posterior surface and you can see this is the musculospiral groove from here and it this is the posterior surface it becomes continuous with the posterior surface and between this lateral surface and the anterior surface this is the anterior surface there is a prominent border here this is a prominent border that is known as crest of the humerus this is known as crest of the hum humerus on here there is insertion of brachiocephalicus muscle and superficial pectoral muscles so they are attached on this crest of the humerus and on the crest of the humerus we see there is a tuberosity present this is known as deltoid tuberosity on this deltoid tuberosity there is insertion of deltoidus muscle so this was the musculospiral groove here this is the crust here this is known as crust of humerus and this is known as deltoid tuberosity so this was about the lateral surface now coming to its opposite surface this is the medial surface this is the medial surface the medial surface it is nearly straight in length you can see this is nearly straight while as the lateral surface was spirally curved so medial surface it is nearly straight in the length and at the middle there is a tubercle present that is known as teres tubercle this is the teres tubercle on which there is insertion of teres major muscle teres major and latissimus dorsi muscle so this is the teres tubercle or teres major tuberosity here this is known as so this was about the medial surface now coming to the anterior surface 
this is the anterior surface this anterior surface it is triangular you can see this is triangular and it is wide above and it is narrow below so above it is wide and then below it is narrow now come to the posterior surface posterior surface it presents neutron foramen so this is the neutron foramen that is present on the posterior surface so now coming to the extremities first we have this extremity this is the proximal extremity in the proximal extremity we have the head just below the head there is a neck we have tuberosities this is the lateral tuberosity this is the medial tuberosity and there is a groove that is intertubular groove or bicipital groove so we have the head we have the neck we have the lateral tuberosity two tuberosities are there and we have the groove that is present in between these tuberosity that are known as intertubular groove or bicipital groove now first coming to this head this head it has a circular articular surface that articulates with किसके साथ articulate करता है that articulates with the glenoid cavity of this scapula and it forms shoulder joint and just below the head there is a constriction present this is known as the neck this is the neck and now coming to the tuberosities first we have the lateral tuberosity and then we have medial tuberosity the lateral tuberosity the lateral tuberosity it is large and prominent and here we have two parts the anterior part this is known as summit this summit it overhangs this bicipital you can see this summit it overhang this is the bicipital root it overhangs this and it has a posterior that is known as convexity so anterior that is the summit and posterior convexity on the later tuberosity there is the insertion of suprasupinatus muscle as well as the infraspinatus muscle and you can see here there is a rough circular area there is insertion of infraspinatus muscle you can see there is insertion of infraspinatus muscle and you can see there is a line oblique line which extends from the neck to the dew. this is known as triceps line from this line there is origin of so on this triceps line there is the attachment of that is known as triceps muscle this is known as triceps line this so we have this uh, lateral tuberosity we see it has two parts the anterior is the summit and the posterior this is the convexity now coming to the next part tuberosity that is this is the medial tuberosity it is Mm, small as compared to that of the later tuberosity on this uh, medial tuberosity there is uh, insertion of the subscapularis suprasupinatus and subscapularis muscle on this medial tuberosity now coming to this we have this groove that is known as a bicipital or intertubular groove this root is covered by fibrocartilage and this allows the passage of the tendon or the biceps muscle so it is covered by fibrocartilage and allows the passage of the tendon of the biceps muscle from this groove that is the bicipital groove so now we have distal extremity so this was the proximal now we have the distal extremity 
so in the distal extremity it is generally it has an oblique surface this extremity it has an oblique surface and this surface it is divided by a ridge this is a ridge that divided the surface into two condyles there are two condyles one is the medial condyle and this is the lateral condyle the medial condyle it is large and prominent while as the lateral condyle it is smaller as compared to the medial condyle so this is the medial condyle and you can see this medial condyle it is traversed by a groove there is a groove present so this is traversed by a groove this groove communicates anteriorly with a fossa this is known as coronoid fossa or a radial fossa and this groove communicates posteriorly with another fossa that is known as olecranon fossa so anteriorly this is the coronoid fossa or the radial fossa and this is the olecranon fossa the coronoid fossa or the radial fossa it receives the coronoid process of the radius during the flexion while as the olecranon fossa it receives the olecranon process of the ulna during the extension so this is the two so this is the coronoid fossa or radial fossa and this is olecranon fossa and these two communicate with the help of this groove so then we have just above the condyles just above and behind the condyle there are epicondyles we have these are the epicondyles you can see this is an lateral epicondyle the lateral epicondyle and medial epicondyle this is the lateral epicondyle because this is lateral condyle and here we have lateral epicondyle the lateral epicondyle it gives origin to the most of the extensor muscles of corpus and digits like extensor carpi radialis common digital medial digital extensor they all originate from this lateral epicondyle and then we have here medial epicondyle which gives origin to the flexor muscles of the corpus and the digits so this medial epicondyle and we have the lateral epicondyle the lateral epicondyle it presents laterally a crust that is known as supra condyloid crust this is the supra condyloid crust which forms the so this is the lateral epicondyle and here this forms a crust here that is known as supracondylite crust which forms the posterior boundary of the muscle so this is the musculospinal groove it forms the posterior boundary so this supracondylite it gives origin to ul uh, ulnaris lateralis origin of the ulnaris lateralis from here supracondylite crust so this was all about the distal extremity so we have discussed about the prox uh, sorry the shaft that is the diaphysis the proximal extremity and the distal extremity of the humerus of the ox so this was all about the humerus of the ox thank you